come from Mexico, from the Vertebrates uh, Genomics and Biodiversity Lab. And today I'm going to talk about the research that I have been doing for my master's. Uh, and it's about genome size evolution in neotropical salamanders. So, um, we are all familiar with the C-value enigma. Uh, we know that the uh, genome sizes of organisms var varies a lot uh, in different uh, groups. And um, in the beginning, researchers didn't know why this happened. Or now we know that the genome size is not correlated with the gene content. But we are still not sure why is it that there is so much variation in some organisms and not so much in other organisms. And um, we are trying to understand uh, what's going on. So uh, just so you know, the C-value is the amount of DNA uh, uh, per haploid cell, and it's usually expressed in picograms. And one picogram of DNA is uh, roughly about a gigabase of DNA. So why do we care about salamander genome sizes? Well, it happens that uh, salamander, salamander genome sizes are very big. They are some of the largest genomes among vertebrates. Uh, just so you know, humans have a genome size of about 3.2 gigabases, and salamanders go all the way from 10 to 120 gigabases of uh, genome of uh, DNA. And maybe you would be thinking like uh, lung fishes have uh, bigger genome sizes, but there are less species of uh, lung fishes. So uh, salamander genome sizes are good to study. And they also have a lot of variation in their genome size. So uh, platodontid salamanders, the platodontid family is the largest family of salamanders, and it's the one on which we are uh, doing our study. Also have ver a lot of variation in genome sizes, and in this uh, graph, you can see some of the effects that genome size could have on the life history of salamanders. In red, we have direct developers. In blue, we have strongly pelomorphic salamanders. And in green, we have aquatic larvae. So you can see that some of the species with the largest genomes are like, uh, skipping the metamorphosis uh, step. This is interesting, but I'm not going to be talking a lot about life history today. So uh, we know that genome size is correlated with cell size. Uh, in here in the black dots, we see the toads and frogs, and in the uh, white uh, dots, we see the salamanders, and you can see that there's a strong correlation between the uh, volume of the red blood cells and the C value. And why is this important? Well, salamanders have a wide diversity of body sizes. There are some salamanders that are very tiny, like this Todis arboris, that is 90 millimeters in snowbed length. And then we can go all the way to Itimulai de Agentia, that it's uh, 163 millimeters in snowbed length. So we have uh, some salamanders that are miniature salamanders. And miniature salamanders, uh, this miniaturization of the salamanders has had some important morphological consequences uh, for them. So for example, in this uh, Todius penatidus salamander, we can see that the, uh, they have a tiny skull, and we can see that the brain has been moved backwards in the, in the skull, and we can see, for example, that the eye is extremely big in, compris in comparison to the head of the salamander. And why, why, why is this? Well, um, since I told you that uh, genome size is correlated with cell size, and we know that an eye needs a minimum amount of cells to work. If these salamanders try to make their eyes smaller, it would just not work. So what can they do? Maybe they can make their genome sizes smaller. So uh, miniaturization also has some important evolutionary advantages. In this work by Martin Feder in 1982, he found out that uh, miniature salamanders would be living in between the bark and the uh, trunk of, of fallen logs, and they would be walking around uh, looking for their optimal temperature, the temperature uh, doing some um, behavioral thermoregulation, with it, which is something that salamanders would usually don't do. And you can imagine that being a tiny salamander is also good uh, for hiding from predators. So, uh, miniaturization has been so uh, 
important evolutionary that it has happened a bunch of times independently in the phylogeny of the salamanders. All these red circles represent uh, clades that have had uh, some miniaturization event in their evolutionary history. So it is, it is good for salamanders, for some salamanders to be small. So that led us to pose the next questions. First of all, what is the genome size of miniature salamanders? Before uh, we started this project, there were only like four reports of the, the genome size of miniature salamanders, and I just showed you there are a bunch of miniature salamanders. Uh, we wanted to know if these redu reductions in body size were, correlate, were correlated with a reduction in the genome size. And we also wanted to know uh, which morphological features might impose a strong selection to reduce the genome sizes. So, yeah. Our hypothesis is that miniature salamanders have experienced independent reductions in their genome sizes as a result of selection for body size. So, you know, selection acts on body size, and as a result, the genome sizes are re reduced as well. So, what we did is that, uh, first of all, we wanted to know the <coughs> genome sizes of a bunch of salamanders that didn't have genome size estimates. So we used this uh, technique that's called phylogeny image analysis densitometry. Uh, it is very uh, simple. You just stain the nuclei of the red blood cells of the salamanders. Then you use uh, image analysis software and convert the number of pixels to an integrated optical density. And then using a known genome and a known non genome, you can do a simple regression and then you get uh, an estimate of the genome size. Then we did a bunch of statistics with the body sizes and then we are also working with phylogenetic comparative methods to see if these correlations are significant. So now to some results. Okay, well, this is a picture. It looks nicer on the computer. But these are red blood cells of salamanders. Octorius lunaris is a miniature salamander and Achillericia galliana is a regularly sized uh, salamander. And you can see that uh, this uh, regularly sized uh, salamander has uh, some bigger nuclei, and this uh, miniature salamander has some smaller nuclei, so that looks promising. And um, these are our, our results um, for all, all the genome size estimates of a bunch of uh, different salamanders. All the salamanders that are in red, there's one over here, are considered miniature salamanders. To be considered a miniature salamander, you have to be less than 35 millimeters in slope and length. And you can see that usually these small salamanders or these miniature salamanders tend to have smaller genome sizes than all the other salamanders. That looks promising as well. So first we used uh, the genome size versus the max node and length of salamanders to try to see if there was a correlation. And this is how we measure the snow bed length from the snow to the bend. And um, what we found out is that uh, there is a positive correlation, and it's a significant correlation, between genome size and max snow bed length. This red line, whatever is on the right of this red line, is, or maybe your left, is uh, they are miniature salamanders. Uh, but once we adjusted for phylogeny using, using phylogenetic independent contrast, uh, we found out that this correlation went down a lot. But is this node bend length a good uh, proxy for body size? There are some salamanders that are very long, and uh, for example, Sundarisia lineola and Odetine longata, but otherwise they are very tiny. Maybe it's not very evident in here, but these salamanders have tiny, 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 tiny heads. It just happens that they have an elongated body size. So we thought, well, if we are thinking that maybe in the head there is uh, some selection uh, for you have to move everything around and have to make it something smaller, maybe a better proxy for body size would be head volume. Uh, so we did that, we got the head volume, measuring the snout uh, gular length, the head width, and the head depth. And uh, then we did, uh, again, a correlation. And this correlation was also significant and it was positive and very strong. Again, this red line, whatever's on the left of the red line is um, our miniature salamanders or considered miniature salamanders. And um, once we did the phylogenetic independent contrast, we found out that this correlation persisted. So maybe head volume is a better uh, proxy of body size. So with that, uh, we have these conclusions. We got genome size estimates for 65 species. 
of the Tropical Salamanders. 53 of these uh, species are new estimates uh, that weren't previously reported on the genome, animal genome size database. Uh, there is a positive and significant correlation between the body size and the genome size. And we found uh, that Thorius philogaster with 9.3 picograms and Thorius aureus with 9.6 picograms of DNA have the smallest genome size ever recorded for uh, salamanders. So these are miniature salamanders and they have some of the smallest genome sizes of salamanders. So that's also very interesting for us. I hope that for you too. So uh, what are the future directions that we are going to take with this work? Well, first of all, we want to continue with the phylogenetic comparative analysis. Uh, I have been attending some talks about phylogenetic comparative analysis and I have some ideas of what I should do next. Uh, this data is very new, so we are still working. It's an ongoing project. And we are going to do low coverage genome sequencing, uh, covering about 0 0.01 of X of uh, the genome of salamanders. Mind you, these are huge genomes, so that's a lot of coverage for uh, those huge genomes. And we're going to try to distinguish between the independent reductions in genome size and retention of the small ancestral genomes. So uh, we are also very interested to see what is going on with the repeated elements on the salamander genome size, uh, genomes. So uh, with that, I would just like to acknowledge uh, all our collaborators, especially the people from the University of Ljubljana and Harwood College, uh, Stanley Sessions and Lila Bismiak and Alesh. Uh, they helped us uh, with the, this volume image analysis densitometry to get the measurements. I would also like to acknowledge um, Rachel Mueller that, from Colorado State University that is helping us try to understand why these salamander genomes are so big. And obviously all my partners and my lab mates from uh, Simvesta, Lionel, and Kevio, uh, my advisor that is over there if you want to talk to me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And also Conacyt for funding and the Society for the Study of Evolution for the travel stipend that, provide, that they provided for them. Thank you very much. Do you have questions? salamanders have a very large eyes compared to the head, so yes. <laughs> but for the ones specifically that have the large genomes, are their eyes larger relative? Oh, uh, so their eyes are larger, they, they are relatively smaller compared to the head because, but they are, you know, still functioning eyes. So if you are a big salamander with a big genome, you can have a, a relatively big eye because it will work. They don't have bigger eyes compared to the heads, something like that, yeah. But they probably do have bigger eyes than the smaller salamanders, that's for sure. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, along those same lines, do you think there's any chance the genome size is constrained by eye size in the larger salamander? So genome size is constrained by eye size in the larger salamanders, once again, if you are a big uh, salamander, you can have a bigger eye, so there is no reason why your uh, eye size should be constrained, right? I mean, why your genome size would be constrained, because the genome size of smaller salamanders, I mean, of bigger salamanders, is, there's less of a constraint in there. Uh, 